Today's video is brought to you by My Bank Account. My Bank Account for all purchases you don't need but want to make anyway. Alright then, all jokes aside, today we'll be overclocking AMD's Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. We're going to do it in the following way. First of all, we're running it through OCCT Linpack for 30 minutes to see if it's stable. If it is stable, we'll run it on Cinebench, which it's running on right now. If that gives us a proper score, we're going to go back into the BIOS, increase the multiplier and perhaps the voltage, and do everything all over again. I'll be showing you guys each multiplier, each final clock setting, each Cinebench score and each CPU temperature. Talking about temperatures, this system is cooled by Noctuus NHD15. The motherboard we'll be using is Gigabyte's Aorus AX370 Gaming 5 running the F3 BIOS which at the moment is the latest and greatest one. We're running 16 gigabytes of G-Skill memory at 2133 with CL14 speeds. Our GPU is a GTX 970 Strix card from ASUS and we're powering everything with a Silverstone SFX 500 watt power supply. Alright, so here are the results of just the stock 3 GHz setting. Now this CPU has precision boost to 3.7 GHz, so that's what I'm going to set it at without messing around with voltages. Hopefully it'll boot, uh, as you can see it's at 1.225 volts. We'll press F10 with everything else on auto, see if it boots. As it turns out, 3.7 GHz is not an issue whatsoever for my particular chip. We're still running 1.225 volts, but right now our Cinebench score is 1590 because we're running at 3.7 GHz. Anyway, let's move on to 3.8, see what happens. Alright, so 3.8 at stock voltage, it won't do, the display just turned off, so let's add a little bit of extra voltage and make it work again. Alright, so I'm going to boost the voltage to 1.3 right now. We're going to leave everything else at auto for now because it should just work fine at 1.3 volts and that is still lower than what the 17 and 1800X run at, so hopefully this should all be fine. Fingers crossed. So just as expected, 1.3 volts at 3.8 gigahertz worked perfectly fine and we've gone all the way up to 1641 points in multi-threaded Cinebench, which for 3.8 gigahertz Ryzen CPU is about where you would expect to be. Let's push it a bit more though. So I just had yet another crash, so this time 1.4 volts and we're just going to brute force our way to 3.9 GHz. Let's see if this works and if it doesn't we'll have to start playing with load line calibration because I saw some funny stuff with the voltages already. Alright and so as you can perhaps see um, there is a bit of funny business going on with our voltage. Now right now I've set it to 1.4 but it kind of drops it right now just gone down to 1.38. Um, and we're really close to what we need. I think we need exactly 1.4 to be stable. So next time I enter the BIOS, I'm going to mess around with load light calibration, set it to the second setting or something to hopefully not drop voltage. If we increase it a little bit, that's fine. We don't want to drop it. So that's what LLC or load line calibration hopefully is going to do for us. So we've already passed what I would recommend you do for a 24 seven overclock right now load line calibration is on the turbo setting. Uh, even worse, I set my base voltage or CPU vCore to 1.44 but it jumps all the way up to 1.5 which is pretty high. So you can see temperatures are going pretty high as well. Remember we started out with only 49 degrees Celsius on the CPU that we're now at 78. So we're producing quite a lot of heat. Uh, we're also producing or well, using quite a lot of electricity right now. So 3.9 is probably as high as I would recommend you to go with a chip like mine uh, for 24-7 usage. However, this video is nowhere near done. We're going to see just how high we can actually clog this thing. All right, so I'm way too stubborn to admit defeat. So I'm um, Trying 4.1 GHz, but voltages are set to 1.55 extreme load line calibration, which pushes it over 1.6 volts, which on air cooling, guys, is way more than you ever want to do, and it is still not stable in OCCT. So I'm just going to try to get one Cinebench run out of this, and let's just see what happens. All right then guys, so we got a whopping 1797 points in Cinebench multi-threaded, 165 single-threaded. Um, that's pretty massive, but as I said, not at all stable for 24-7 use. And 1.55 volts is just way too much, so don't ever run that. So let's go to our conclusion. So to conclude our Ryzen overclocking chip, uh, I'm going to go back to 3.9 myself because all these chips seem to max out at around 4GHz anyway and that 100MHz 
increased voltage by so much and temperatures by so much that to me it's not worth it it may be to you and if you want to really overclock your chip um, make sure you don't push voltages too high because you will really easily hit the limitations of your chip no matter which cooler you're using so something like this d15 is plenty capable to cool any ryzen chip at the moment at maximum clock speeds uh, you hit the chip limitations way before power delivery or cooling limitations so with all that in mind guys it's time to end if you liked this video please press that like button if you didn't hit that subscribe button for when i make a video that you do like if you want to follow the channel more there's facebook twitter and instagram for that and if you want to support the channel there's a patreon link in the description below for now thank you very much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one